If you each had, or the four of you who, who have flown, each had one thing uh, to, to pass on to a new flyer, what would it be? Whether it's an operational or technical recommendation or, or a life experience or an emotional experience, what would it be? I can say one thing. Uh, the training for technical or scientific work, you will be well trained. So I just suggest, like a story Musgrave told me before my first flight, take the time to live the space experience as a human. Uh, regard, I mean, putting aside the technical objectives of your mission. Enjoy it. I hate to not be original, but I would say exactly the same thing, especially on a long duration flight. Um, there will be plenty to do and you'll be well enough trained to do it. But there really is, uh, I think there's an art to enjoying your free time. It's difficult to not want to go finish this task that you didn't do last Thursday. And you need to resist that temptation because it'll, it'll be done, it'll be accomplished sooner or later. And really you may find it important to almost plan some things that you want to do, personal things. Um, write poetry, watch a movie, read a book, do something for yourself and, and actually make a list of those things and try to get to it and, and finish it because if you just say, well, I'll get to that one day, it's very difficult and the time goes by almost as fast, uh, well, probably faster up there than it does here. Yeah, yeah, I agree also that the technical aspects are not the hard to uh, hand over to the others and uh, actually we have uh, when the, a new um, um, astronaut is arriving in the station, uh, we have a big handover book that we go through and it takes uh, a few, few days to go through all of it. So technical aspects is covered by the training, so I think that's not what the, the newcomers want to know. They usually want to know about the daily life, which, which is much less covered by the, by, by the training. They want to know about the small details of, of, uh, of daily life. And uh, this is probably the hardest thing to to, to pass because uh, it's, uh, there is a lot of things that you just leave but uh, it's hard to, to put, it, put it in words sometimes. And Sergey, anything? Uh, what I would say that uh, all of us on the ground go through serious training. We learn how to take care of different systems, different, different equipment and we do it in flight. Uh, we do it for mission success. We train to do this and we do it. But what uh, I would suggest uh, for new cosmonaut to pay attention not only to experiments, not only to uh, hardware, but also to your crewmates, because for for mission success, this is very essential thing. I want to mention maybe it was done, it was said earlier this afternoon, but the current crew on board are all three making their first flight. And I think it's a, it's a signature, it's a sign that this program is mature. Uh, are the skills of the astronauts now uh, required very differently from what they were in the past, in particular in the view of the future mission to, uh, to Moon and, and Mars eventually? So maybe each of you can have a short comment on that. Mike? On the NASA side, uh, the I think the requirements have evolved quite a bit and that's mainly due to the fact that we focus um, on long duration now instead of short duration. So I was uh, selected in 1992. The ISS was an idea at the time but it wasn't really in practice so people were, were really, nobody really talked about that during the actual selection process. Now we're actually in this next class we'll only select people that we think can fit in the Soyuz which is a smaller subset of the population than it is for shuttle. Uh, there will be probably some more emphasis on psychological aspects that might uh, rend themselves better to long duration flight. Uh, but I think the fundamental things that are important are still the same. Uh, one is to be a good operator. Um, it's a, sort of a difficult thing to describe but it's uh, experience making quick decisions and correct decisions. I say a second one is uh, being able to work on a team which is probably um, key from the beginning because you participate in so many teams, your crew is a team, you're on a team with the mission control team, you're on a team with the payload um, people and so that's very important and um, you know lastly I guess the ability to learn quickly if that can ha somehow be measured. I was interested to hear that 
in the ESA selection, they have a very uh, objective um, exam, basically, that uh, goes that everyone has to take, and they're using that as a basis without before anybody looks at an application, and um, that's an interesting development. I know at NASA we don't we have not done that in the past per se. It's just a select out criteria, but ESA is using it as a select in criterion, which is a bit different. But uh, working as a team uh, as a team member and and having an operational experience. Spending some time in your garage, those are all very important things. Jean-François, any big difference? Well, things I, I've seen evolving in training, I would talk just about training, and things that have not evolved and that needs to evolve. Uh, things that have evolved, I think, the hardware that astronauts are operating are more and more complex, uh, just because computers and software are more complex. In the past, there were a lot of dedicated controls, like uh, the thousand switches or circuit breakers in the cockpit of the space shuttle. But on ISS, the crew uh, interacts with the systems more and more through laptops. The network of laptops on board the ISS plays a role of the, like a cockpit. So it's uh, more and more remote interaction and uh, more complex operation. I flew on BioLab. BioLab was very manual, a lot of manual action for biological experiment. Now, no, BioRack. And now it's BioLab, where most of those things that I was doing manually are now automated. But things that have are not changed is the fact that the crew still depends a lot on the ground. And that's the way it was designed. But I suggest strongly that in the lifetime of the space station, we exercise some... Uh, uh, some scenario where we tell the, we, we prepare uh, some scenario where the crew would not have to talk at all to the ground for a few days, for example, just to see, to prepare for Mars. If we still depend a lot on the ground, we will not learn lessons that are needed to go further away and not depending so much uh, on the ground. Sergei, the next generation of Russian cosmonaut will be different? Uh. What Mike said that at NASA they change the requirement for astronauts uh, switching from short duration to long duration flights. In Russia we have uh, long duration flights for a long time already, so our selection process is already uh, take this in account. But I think what changing <coughs> recently in, in requirements is that uh, ability to switch between different tasks. Uh, still, uh, we have a limited crew on board. Uh, the number of tasks and number of uh, fields uh, astronauts and cosmonauts are working in uh, getting more and more complex. And ability to switch between tasks, ability to endure uh, long duration flight and keep focus on uh, doing the task uh, might be essential for, for future missions. Uh, and of course, uh, with increasing complexity of the flight, uh, we need to, to be sure that uh, crew members are able to work in a team, in international team, to be able to adapt different uh, philosophy, different approach, and uh, that's probably kind of flexibility uh, that will require from, from future cosmonauts. The last thing I think, and uh, Probably one of the most important is uh, is the patience, because uh, even now, long duration flight, long training for the mission, uh, increased complexity of the flight, and for future missions like flight to Mars, of course, is going to be a long flight, and you will need to be able to uh, to sustain all these difficulties during training and flight itself.